Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm joined by Opal. So this is going to be a very casual video. I honestly didn't really want to be on camera but I feel like it's more personal um, since discussing this topic that I do appear on camera. So this is nothing fancy but this is a very raw and real conversation and it's something that I feel needs to be addressed. So this is going to be kind of the do's and don'ts of being a doll collector and how to interact with fellow doll collectors. Now, this kind of does apply to the outside community as well, but sometimes the outside community does not know any better. Um, so I just want to say that this has been something I've been thinking about doing for a very long time because of things that have been said to me and that have been said to my friends and just other things that I've observed on other accounts and just talking with other people. And through the help of some of you over on Instagram, we've compiled a little, I don't wanna say list, but it's kind of like I said, the do's and don'ts of doll collecting. So it's a doll etiquette, if you will. If my thoughts are all over the place, I'm kind of, I don't wanna say nervous about making this because it's really, it's nothing bad. It's just kind of like a, it's a little um, lesson basically. So if you've seen any of these happen or if you yourself maybe have done these, you might not know it's impolite. So this is just kind of tips to kind of help you and make sure the way you say does not come off the wrong way. So the number one thing that bothers me and I know it bothers a lot of people is when people ask, they say, can you sell me that doll? Are your dolls for sale? And okay, as collectors, we sell dolls left and right. I do it all the time. But I will post on my Instagram, there is a for sale story highlight. I will post that. Every doll in my collection that is up for sale right now is over there, okay? So if you see a doll behind me that you like, go check the, um, go check my Instagram. And if that doll's not up there, that means she is not for sale. There are specific dolls that I will never part with, like Opal. Um, so don't ask, she is not going anywhere. Nope, sorry. Um, but it is very, very off-putting and rude when people say stuff like, is that doll for sale? Is your collection for sale? I will give you X amount of money for this doll. If it's not for sale, then no amount of money is gonna make me give these up. I'm sorry. I'm not somebody who's motivated by money and I hope a lot of you aren't either because, you know, money is kind of the root of all evil and I'm I'm not motivated by it. It does not matter. It doesn't matter at all. And that kind of leads me into my next point. When people ask, how much money did you spend on that? Or say comments like, this happens to me all the time. Even as a little kid, it would be like, oh wow, you really should be saving for your children's college instead of spending that much money. Or leave that doll in the box because it'll be worth a lot more if you don't touch it. Or, you know, like imagine the thousands of dollars you have wasted in this room. It might be wasted to you, but it's not wasted to me. And I know as collectors, we can all agree on that front. This is like, it's an investment, okay? And I personally, these dolls bring me happiness and joy and I would much rather sit here in a room full of them than have mil millions of dollars and be unhappy. So that's just kind of my take on that. It does not matter to me how much anybody spends on their dolls. I am a firm believer in bargain shopping and deal shopping and things like that. But if somebody is okay with paying hundreds of dollars for a specific doll, that's okay with me. Like even not one of these, but you know, Monster High, Bratz, Ever After. Rainbow High, I don't think we've gotten to that point yet, but you know what I mean? Every collector has their own spending limits and their own spending means and their own way of spending. So I'm a budget collector, okay? I collect as much as I can and dolls that I love in my collection. I have a very special story or bond with each doll in my collection. If I don't, I sell her, I put her on the for sale highlights and she can go to one of you. But it's just the assumptions that people make. And I had a comment a while ago, a couple months ago, and someone said, oh gosh, it was something about, um, now when I bring up these comments, I will not be showing them or name dropping because I don't do that, okay? Sometimes the people just genuinely do not know better. Olivia is here, so her tail says hello. Um, Someone made the comment about how my wallet must be aching because of the fact that I have so many of these. Not that it's any of your business, but I I don't remember if I responded to this actually. My wallet is doing just fine. I have taught myself and you have, you've all asked me this a lot. How do you manage it? And I've explained the process I go through when I receive my paycheck from my job that I work very hard at to afford things I have. Um, 
I explain how I budget and that I feel like you could absolutely say it in a totally different way instead of like, oh my God, your wallet must be hurting. You could say, so how do you budget for all these? You know, like, please share your budgeting tips with us because I get a lot of questions like that. And that I'm totally comfortable with sharing because if I can help you figure out how to get the dolls you want and still have money to live like a normal human being, then absolutely. But don't assume somebody is just like, driving themselves into the ground to get these dolls, like spending every last penny they have on these dolls and then they're like in debt because of them. No, absolutely not. No, no, no. That is definitely not something you want to do because um, it's just comments like that that are, they're very offensive. Now, when I say offensive, I also want you guys to know I don't get like hurt by any of these comments. I'm more just like, what the actual heck, okay? And that's the PG version of what I actually say sometimes because the way people come up with stuff, you're like, Huh. Another thing I wanted to touch on is when people say, can you send me those dolls for free? So this sometimes is even worse than asking people to sell you their dolls because they're expecting things for free. Now, I have received this a couple times and I don't think I ever reply to these because I try to reply to every comment I can and especially ones like this as politely as possible because, you know, again, I'm here to educate people on all aspects of life. So that is just, that can be worse because as collectors, we work very hard for our dolls as I previously touched on. Okay, so I'm not going to be sending you anything for free. Now, there is a difference. If you are friends or family with a collector and you happen to gift them something, that's totally different. Or if there's a giveaway going on that your favorite YouTuber is hosting or AGIG or whatnot, that is all completely different. But you're not going to, you know, don't ask, send me Opal for free. Opal is a one of a kind custom. No, thank you. Um, I'm sorry if I seem like really rude in these, but I this bothers me a lot and I really just want to get my frustrations out there and see like if you guys feel the same way on some of these topics, which, okay. So since I brought up one of a kind customs, I there's two things I wanna to touch on here. First of all, I have had these comments directed at me ever since I started collecting customs about how ugly they are or how, um, slutty they are basically i i've had that before um how they look like whores this is not family friendly but it has been left in my comment section um so that's a fun time and so i think that first of all as a collector your preference of age for your dolls is totally up to you my girls are probably in their early 20s i mean my modern ones okay this there's no child that's gonna be walking around wearing this and I would certainly hope not. But uh, my historicals are probably still in their regular ages, but the modern ones, yeah, they're probably a few years younger than me, honestly, but I don't actually like do stop motions with them or anything, but I mean, come on, they do have personalities and stuff. And so, yeah, they are definitely older. And I think like, you don't have to state that as a collector, but I, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a weird thing because, you know, some collectors keep their ages, others don't. And when you say stuff like that, it's not just how they're dressed, it's the way their makeup is done. And I have dolls with tattoos and piercings and stuff like that. You have to keep in mind, these dolls were created by other like doll collectors, customizers, artists. This is their work. And you are insulting something that somebody worked so incredibly hard on. If I see a custom I don't like, I'm like, oh, well, okay, maybe somebody else would like her. And you probably think, oh, she's just making this up for the internet. No, I've genuinely never seen an ugly American Girl doll, okay, that someone has made. Some face-ups may not be the best, but maybe that's that person's first custom. Maybe they're like me and have an eye condition, but they wanted to try it anyway. I thought about doing it for a little while. Then I just, no, eye swapping was too hard for me, okay? I'm not strong enough for that life. So then I was just like, no, I'm gonna support those of us who do collect and do customs. And that's how I wound up with a ton of customs that I have. And so every style of custom doll might not be for everyone. You might not like custom dolls, that's totally okay. I didn't in the beginning, I did not. Well, a few of those changed my mind and here we are today. So customs are not for everybody, I get it. Modern Etsy style dressing is not for everybody, I understand. But again, even with Etsy clothes, somebody made these, okay? You're insulting somebody else's hard work. So really, this goes for all doll brands because there are custom doll brands or there are people customize Rainbow High, I have a couple of those. People customize Monster, Ever After, you know, 
every doll brand is customized and they are artists. They're collectors, they're artists, they're people just like us. And if a doll does not appeal to you, you don't need to say they look ugly. Moving back to the sales portion. So some people actually over on Instagram brought this up and I never even thought this would be like in the doll etiquette, but since it's happened to me a couple times, I wanted to touch on this. So if you are buying and selling through kind of PayPal, friends and family, which I have purchased from multiple times, okay? So this is a little bit different. There is kind of like a, if the doll or item you're purchasing does not ship, you know, like you, you can't get your money back sometimes, even if you ask the person, okay, you've taken this amount of time to ship, can I have my money back? Sometimes they'll say, sure, no problem, end of drama, sorry, I couldn't ship it. Or other times it can get really messy and really bad and you can be waiting an extremely long time for your item to ship. That's all I'm gonna say on that front. But yes, it's happened to me twice. Um, one, I actually have the doll, she's fine. And another, I'm still, the jury's still out on that one, but it's fine, don't worry about it. We don't need to discuss that at all, please. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, a couple people on Instagram actually brought that up and I was like, that's a really good point because if you're gonna send something, if you're going to ask somebody to pay you like a couple hundred dollars for a doll, you should ship within a timely matter. And I mean, timely matter being like weeks or not weeks, oh my God, one week, do not take weeks. However, if there's like some dire emergency, you're in the hospital or somebody is in your, somebody in your family's in the hospital or something like that that's completely different but communication is definitely key do as much as you can try and explain to that person what is going on do not ignore their messages if you can do not leave them on red if you can it just it's a lot of anxiety for the purchaser because they've invested money in this and then there's no information so that was actually a really good point i was really glad some people brought that up as well i believe this is the last one we're going to touch on but this is a pretty big one so i don't know if any of you have ever had this issue but i have had this countless times um, this started way, way back when I did my very first eye swap between a Kanani and a Sage. No longer have the Sage, but she is the doll that we will be discussing in this. So if you don't know, when you eye swap an American girl, you pop out the eyes and then you pop the new eyes in, okay? And it's a process. It involves hot water and squishing and pushing and just very dramatic. So... It was my first attempt, okay? I did not know what I was doing and given my visual impairment, it is very difficult, especially to know if the eyes are straight or not. So I was very, very proud of my first custom, everything, she looks really cute and stuff. And so I posted a picture of her. Somebody commented and was like, that doll's eyes aren't straight, it really bothers me. First of all, my eyes aren't straight, they move all the time, I have nystagmus and if you're bothered by my doll's eyes, I can't imagine why you would, you know, follow me. You get what I'm saying? So if my doll's eyes are crooked, and this goes for any of my dolls, because I know the smaller ones kind of have some, there's some placing issues sometimes, or brats screening issues or something. That doesn't bother me, especially when it's an eye thing, because my eyes are so incredibly far from the normal eye, it does not bother me at all. And any type of flaw on any doll, if the makeup is a little bit messed up, or you don't like how someone's hair is, or how they've redressed their doll, or whatever, if there is a flaw in someone else's doll, it should not bother you. If it does, that is extremely concerning. I'm, I'm not even being funny about that. Like, you don't even know this person. You see, you see these pieces of plastic, well, she's, yeah, and cloth in her case, through an electronic device. They're thousands, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of miles away from you. The way they look should not bother you. And maybe I happen to like my dolls with little quirks and stuff like that, and I do. And some dolls, I have specifically my Mara Pinkette from Rainbow High, she has a bad eye. And she gets comments all the time about how it makes her even more ugly. What you don't know is my best friend picked that doll out for me. So that doll's very special to me. My, six or four out of the six rainbow high dolls from series four i picked out and they all have bad lips because i was so focused on the eyes because i was paranoid there was going to be something wrong with their eyes i didn't even look at their lips okay so yeah even though this sucks quality control is a thing and it 
it, it's not always the greatest, okay? So we do have to look and sometimes I do miss things, okay? And so if I have dolls with imperfections, I'm not gonna lie, I do get kind of nervous to see what the community is gonna roast them for next. But at the end of the day, they're mine, I love them. If the imperfection doesn't bother me, it's fine. A lot of the times I can't even see, like my Lyric Lucas from Rainbow High, that girl is missing half an eyebrow. And I didn't notice for about six months until somebody pointed it out. I was like, oh, and now I see it. So there's a difference between being helpful, like, hey, did you know this? Or, oh my God, that doll looks so ugly because of blah, blah, blah. No, we don't, we don't say that. That's just, that's, that's not nice. And it's so distasteful and rude and just, come on. We, for the most part, I would hope we're all adults here. And if you're in the teenage world, then, you know, just, you know, be kind. Okay. That's, that's the way. Okay. Everything is going to be a lot better for you if you're kind to others in the end. So I believe that is all the points I wanted to cover because I don't want to make this too long. And I do apologize if I came off as super, super ranty in this video. Well, now we have the other cat. Hi, honey. Um, super, super ranty in this video. I, I didn't want to do that, but I kind of, this has been bothering me for a while. And again, it's not just stuff that's happened to me. It's stuff I see that happens to other collectors um, or, you know, my friends who are other collectors and stuff. I've just observed it over the years. And I've thought about making a video in the past, but I was a little bit nervous. Like I said, I'm still kind of nervous with this one, but I'm not because I think it's things that a lot of us feel, but a lot of people don't want to say. So if you have any other tips, you know, for being kind, because we all come here to escape from the craziness of the real world. And we're literally all here for the dolls. Okay. I'm here to share my collection with you and my joy of collecting them, you know, and to make some more friends, which I have made. So, um, yeah, just let me know down below if you have any other tips for kindness and things like that. Or if you want to share some things you've experienced and maybe we can help you get through that. Just again, comments, positive, polite, and respectful down below. If you have not already, give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to join the fam and tap that really cool notification bell so you know the exact moment I post a new video. Have a blessed day and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye everybody.